Welcome to Christian Fitness. Thank you for letting us come in and help train you to get healthier and stronger, to create more endurance. Just thank you that you're a part of this. You are a part. If we were, we could do this, but if you aren't doing it with us, then you're not a part. So thank you, we get to be a part. Yeah, do what you can. I yeah. mean, participate as much as you can. Today we're gonna to be working legs and we are gonna be using dumbbells. So if you have a dumbbell, go grab it before we get started. But we're gonna be working legs, do what you can. If you don't have a dumbbell, just try to do as much as you can. If you don't have great flexibility in your hips and your knees and you can't do a lot of things, we're gonna do, try, do as Stretch. much as you can. Yeah, go down one inch instead of squatting all the way down. Just do what you can, move as much as you can, increase the blood flow, increase the oxygen in your body. So tons and tons of benefits for moving and that's why we're doing this walk fit challenge. This is, we're still, well, actually we're almost done with walk fit challenge. So there's only a couple of weeks left. So make sure that you join, you can join us at any time though because walking is so good for you. It actually helps you adopt a new lifestyle. So that's our whole encouragement here is to set goals, achieve those goals, and then maintain that as a healthier lifestyle. In other words, it's a 12 week challenge, but we don't want you to stop it after 12 weeks. Correct. We want you to keep going. This is about living life well. And it becomes a habit. It becomes a daily habit of, you know what? I'm gonna take 20 minutes out to do some you know, resistance training. I'm gonna take 15 minutes out to walk. I'm gonna take 10 minutes five times a day and go for a walk. I'm gonna take you know, my 15 minute break at work and walk for 10 minutes. So it's just changing your lifestyle, just being more active. You know, if you become a little more active, you may, you could do this. It could be a form of a fast, don't eat. Go work out for 10 minutes. Instead of eating something, work out something, whatever that is, whatever body part that is. But use that as you know a physical fast, not a spiritual fast, or although it could be a spiritual fast because if you're just studying the Word of God, then it is, it becomes that. So replace every bad habit with Jesus and then you're good. We talked about goals. Lori's goal today, if you watched our show right. on arms, which I think it aired <laughs> yesterday, but anyway, you can go back and look that one up. But anyway, Lori lifted 500 pounds just with her arms. Now granted, it was through the whole course of the program. Right. Today, she's gonna do at least 400 pounds just using her legs. Right. So her goal today is 400 pounds, to lift 400 pounds. And she's gonna do that in 10, 15 minutes. So like we said, it doesn't take, I don't. you don't have to say, oh, I've gotta go to the gym for three hours. 10 or 15 minutes, she's gonna lift 400 pounds. That's gonna help build some strength. It's gonna strengthen her muscles, strengthen her bones, increase the blood flow, increase the oxygen in her body, and just help us get healthier. Exciting. Good goal. That's a really good goal. Why are we standing here? Are we oh, we're standing here because it's, it's this cool monitor <laughs> and the cool set. You know, hey, we're just, I don't know, because it looks cool. Because look, these are our four goals. See, that's why we're standing here because it's super cool. <laughs> Flexibility, balance, strength, and endurance. These are the four things we're trying to work on for you. Today, flexibility, definitely in your hips and your knees with some of the leg exercises we're going to do. Balance, we're gonna be doing some leaning. We're gonna to lean to the side to help you with your balance there. Strength, we're using dumbbells, but even your own body weight helps yes. improve your strength. So Huge. we're working strength, endurance. In between those leg exercises, we're probably gonna either march in place or get on our rebounders and walk a little bit more so we keep our heart elevated. In other words, we're not gonna do you know a set of squats and then just stop and stand around for two minutes. Yeah, we're no. gonna keep the heart rate continuing exactly. to go because that way you keep that heart rate going instead of just stopping. It's important. So you ready? 400 pounds oh, with yeah. your legs? Absolutely. <laughs> so grab some dumbbells at home. And here's the, here's the key to it. Lori's gonna do 400 pounds, but she's only lifting with four two, pounds. Yeah, which is nothing. So. so what's more fun to say? Lori lifted four pounds today which she will each repetition that she does, or she lifted 400 Be careful, pounds. you might challenge me and then I'll wanna go get some more weight instead of. Oh, first thing we need to do, we need to warm up. Yes. So go ahead, put your dumbbells down. And one of the best warmers you can do, just march in place for just a second, just to get some flexibility in the legs, get the heartbeat going. I wanna add to that pumping. because marching in place is great. It does, it gets your blood pumping and everything. But since we are gonna work on legs and I'm actually working through a tendon irritation, um, it's lift your legs up higher. Get those knees because you're gonna use your knees a lot. So get those That's knees cool. really moving. And then, yeah, yeah get do a good it, stretch. Doing. Go ahead and pull the knee up. Really stretch out your back from your back pocket all Whoa. the way through your hamstring. Just yeah, get a nice good watch stretch. what you're doing. <laughs> and then let's pull it behind to stretch the quadricep, which is the front of the thigh. 
get your balance first. Well, hey, that's one of the four keys, right? Balance. <laughs> Anything on one foot really improves your balance. Well, this also stretches the hip, which is really good too. Let's just step out and sink the hip, which is gonna stretch almost everything. You wanna to try to force your heel down, which will stretch your calf. You're gonna stretch your hamstring, your hip flexor. You know, I think that's an automatic. If you stretch like this, you automatically, if you do this right, you wanna keep your feet lined up straight. Um, if something hurts, like if you were doing it like this, Ow, don't even do that. and it hurts, and you should never do it like this, by the way. You need to keep your feet straight. Don't move them around. But if something hurts, that means adjust your feet around because you probably have it in the wrong, you're in the wrong position, and it puts stress on the muscle or the tendon, right? Your, your body will tell you, listen to your body. Your body will tell you when you're doing something incorrectly. You should not feel, there's a difference between like, I'm tight just from, I mean, you need to stretch. There's a difference between a stretching tightness. We always talk about a rubber band. You think of a rubber band, it's stretched, but there's no, there's, switch. There's, there's no pain or damage that's gonna happen to that rubber band. There's a difference between that stretching tightness versus pain. Pain is more like a thorn. <laughs> you jab yourself with a thorn, that's pain versus just the stretching of a rubber band. So if you feel actual pain, lighten up, let up a little bit and figure out, okay, why am I feeling a twinge of pain in my knee? Is my, like Lori said, is my foot in the wrong direction? Right. Am I going too low? Is my knee past my toe, which it shouldn't be? So just, you know, yeah, well, adjust, adjust just, your position. Let me help you with something because since I am working through a little tendon irritation, this is what I noticed and you may notice this too, that if you go down in a sudden movement, you may feel that pull in the tendon, which I did. If you slow down, and slow your stretch down and then stay there that heats up the muscle and it gives that stretch so that's the key is don't do it too fast slow down because now that doesn't hurt like it did if i just went bam like that without any kind of stretch it increases the blood flow like right. you said just as you're moving the little bit of marching we did beforehand Correct. increase the blood flow it warms up the muscles so you think about a rubber band if you put a rubber band in your um freezer <laughs> take it out and pull it, what's gonna happen? It's gonna pop. It's gonna break. You take it out and let it fall, then you can stretch it. That's so a great same analogy. You know, I just came up with that. Anyway, That's same great. principle, <laughs> same principle of your muscles, your tendons. They need the blood flow, they need the oxygen flow to loosen up. And that's what we just did. We limbered up, we walked a little bit. All right, we ready? 400 pounds? Sure. Let's start with just a side lunge. So you're just gonna lean to one side, and there's your exercise. You're just pushing up, and that would be one. We'll just do the same side. I had to get in and sync And you can bring your you. dumbbells you know, next to your knee. You can keep them out at your side, depending on how low you go. That five. So we'll just do, what, 10 on each side. Six, yeah. And it's rare on this show that we actually count repetitions. Because that's boring. <laughs> so we usually just do it for time. But today we're actually counting. Ten. That should be 10. All right, now so we're 10, 10 to the other side. And the other part of this is, he goes really fast with a lot of things. Slow down if this bothers you. Go slower. Go into the lunge slower. It will help you. Seven. <laughs> I didn't know where we were. Eight. Nine. And 10. Good, let's put them down. That's 20. So now we're gonna march, like we said. After we do a set. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> careful. Watch where you're walking. After we do a set, we just want to keep our heart rate up. We're building that endurance. If you have some kind of tracker, your phone, carry your phone with you. We're not doing anything excessive workout today that you couldn't have your phone in your pocket. And most cell phones have a built-in tracker of some kind. Can I just say a little sidebar? This is just total sidebar. I love this music. It's so much fun. <laughs> that whistle makes you just kind of like, that's a great whistle while you're walking. So anyway, that just, it hit me all of a sudden, he's talking and I'm hearing all this whistling. I'm going, yeah, I like this. Well, music is key while working out. We encourage you to listen to the Bible while you're working out. You can get yep. the word while you're walking and working out, the right music. And here we can't hear the birds and you can't hear the wind and the rustle and all those things, so. So we already did 20 repetitions. Our goal is 100 repetitions. That's how Lori's gonna get to her for 400 pounds. So we already did 20 reps at four pounds a piece. So she's already done 80 pounds. Ready? Yep. 
Although that didn't even count. Just squatting and picking them up, I, we're already counting that, but that should be a squat. That should count. All right. We're going to do a forward lunge. So again, let's start out really low. You don't have to go very far. And we'll do 10 on each side. He said start really low. What do you mean? I'm sorry, as far as slow. The, the knee flexion, right? Start off slowly, and depending on your level, I want to break this down. how low you go. So you're not just like plunging into this. You're literally moving, putting your foot down, and then lunging down. The key is it's called a lunge. You're actually dipping the back knee. Right. So you're not leaning. You're actually staying upright, and then you dip the back. That's why it's called a lunge. I'm lunging, but you're dipping the back knee. And that's what I meant by low. You want to start off. I actually meant you want to start off high just to get warmed <laughs> up. And then, depending on your level, how flexible you are, you know, go down all the way to your knee almost touches the ground. I have no idea how many we've done. I think that's six. We'll say it's six. So that's seven. <laughs> Eight. Nine. And ten. And then switch sides. So ten on the other side. And again, it doesn't matter how low you go. Just reach out, dip the back leg, keep the back up nice and straight, and dip the back knee. Are you counting? Yep, that's five. <laughs> I don't know why, for some reason, I just forget to count. The, the other part too is if you can't, if this causes pain, you don't have to like way lunge out there like that. Just make your lunge a little lower. That was 10. That was 10. And squatting to pick up your dumbbells and squatting back down to put that them down. That counts too. Even count. I'm we're sweating. Not, we're not including it. <laughs> So Lori's actually sweating a little bit, and we've only done 40 repetitions, yep. but you're using the largest muscle groups in your body. Good? Your back pocket, your thighs. <clears throat> and now pump your arms while you're walking. Pump, 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 because that gets the heart going. I love So you actually are, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You actually are getting cardio and legs twice because you're still walking and lunging and you're walking. But that didn't make sense. <laughs> Sorry. That's a lot of walking. <laughs> lots of walking, lots of lunging. Well, it's the walk fit challenge. So that's why kind of why we're walking in between getting the legs active. Ready? Yep. Another set. All right, we're going to do squats. You can bring your dumbbells up and hold them up here if you want to. You can keep them by your side. You can put them in front of you, however you want to hold your dumbbells. But we're just act like we're having a seat. We're just gonna squat just a little bit. So just sit back as if you're having a seat. So pretend there was an exercise ball or a couch behind you. You're gonna have a seat and stand back up. Again, like I said, you can put your dumbbells up here if you want. Although, you know, it's automatically gives me it's like some kind of motion. This was for. Um, of me wanting to do something with my arms. <laughs> it's just weird not doing something yeah, with your arms. Yeah, it's nice to just hold them up here. Six. Seven. <laughs> yeah, we now we have to do 20 of these. Because we're only doing, we don't have two legs. You know, we're not alternating left and then right. Is that nine or 10? 10. You got 10 more in you? If your legs are tight, give yourself a break for a second. Stretch yourself out. Or just slow down. We'll slow down. So there's 13. Change your stance. And you can change the position of your dumbbells. Like I said, you can put them in between. Oh, that's true. It's actually called a sumo squat, where you widen your legs a little, and you have the dumbbells in the front. It's a sumo squat. Not one of my favorites. I just don't like the dumbbells in front. But... That's 20. <laughs> that's 20 already? Yep. I think For I me. Missed, I, yeah, I missed a few. You missed a few, but I that's okay. I was talking and missed a few. I don't like that anyway. <laughs> You're at 20. This is a front. Is that 20? Yep. Which gives us 60. Almost there. We only have 40 more to go to reach 400 pounds. You good? So now's the time to really lift your legs up high, get your knees warmed up because you really are putting some stress on them. If you're feeling any pain, that means walk longer, do less reps of this. Build yourself up to this. 
Not everybody may be able to do 20 of something. If you can't do 20 of something, do 10 of something. But you're still gonna be lifting a lot of weight. Plus you're lifting your own body weight, not just those. Yeah, especially with the squats. I mean, right. a lot of the legs that we're doing today, just your body weight, I mean, really four pounds, <laughs> it's not a lot of weight. No. Even what I'm using, what am I using? Nine, 18 pounds, not a lot of weight. Just your body weight alone for a lot of these is just, it's great exercise. Well, you think about how heavy the head is. The head is about 10 pounds or more. So when you put it down, that's when the weight hits. So think of your body as the same thing. Your thighs are your largest muscle group in the body. It weighs something for whatever your Well, just take is. your body weight, whatever your body weight is. Yeah. If you weigh 200 pounds, Every time you squat, you're basically Squatting. lifting 200 pounds or close to it. You, know, you subtract everything maybe from the knees down, <laughs> but the rest of it is all weight that you're lifting. Ready? Yeah. All right, we're at 60. We have 40 more to go, so two more sets. This is gonna be an easy one. We're going to do a calf raise, but you're still lifting the weight. So what you wanna do, and this is a fun one because you can vary, maybe we'll do it but you can vary the direction of your toes. We'll start with our toes forward, and on a calf raise, you just wanna raise up on your toes and hold it for one or two seconds, and then come back down. Which is great. So you wanna come up, hold it, and come back down. You would raise up and hold it. Is that three, four? We'll try to keep count. This actually feels good. When you're doing a lot of walking, you're forcing your feet to stretch. Nine. One of the keys on this is try to go down as slowly as you come up. So build a resistance. Yeah, exactly. So come down really slowly. Then if you want to have fun with it, you can point your toes out, almost like a ballet. What is this, honey? First position or something? I don't really know. No, this is first position. Yeah, but it's close. So This you're... is second. Okay, toes pointed out <laughs> is another way to do it. You can also point your toes in kind of a pronated, a, what they call a pigeon toe, but you can bring your toes in. And if you do these different, these three different forms, so toes forward, toes in, and toes out, you'll feel a difference. You'll feel the different we portions of We actually should be calf. doing these separate, as separate counts. I have no idea where we are I think that's about five on this one. Well. So five more. Okay. I'm gonna go toes out for the last five. And slowly, and you're a sloth on this one. <laughs> and you come down as slowly as you can. Like the kids. You know, it's funny, the kids show, they love doing the sloth exercises. Anything that's slow. Probably because it feels good to them. Okay. Let's keep our heart rate up now. Because your heart rate should have lowered a little on the calf raise. Definitely not as much <laughs> cardio as doing squats. Although I'm breaking a sweat, so. So we took a little break with the calves, so now we want to get our heart rate back up a little bit by marching or you know running in place. So 400 pounds. We're only 20 repetitions away, and we still have what? What are we going to do Almost next? Almost 10 minutes left in the show. What are we going to do next? Let's do something fun that they'll enjoy something doing. Something fun? Something they'll enjoy doing. So what are we going to do next? I Most of these exercises he'll create in his head. Yes, we talk about them before the show. What are we going to do? And then right in the middle of the show, we'll change it, which is <laughs> well, good. Well, there's so many different exercises. Right. I mean, it's, it's, you know, what do you feel like doing today? What body part do you want to work? What do you feel like is underdeveloped or needs to be developed more? I mean, if you, if you play any kind of sports, you're going to be sports specific in your training. Right. If you're in your more advanced years, it may just be the strength and endurance to walk more. This is the Walk Fit Challenge. We're trying to increase how many steps we get. Whoa. So maybe we just work, I don't know, for the next set, maybe we just work on walking. I'm ready. What would you like to do? I don't know. That's what I was sitting here thinking about and forgetting I about. I think we should combine them all. Can you combine all four? Go ahead. It was a side lunge. It was our first one. Just go down a little bit. Then we did a forward lunge where you dip. Then we did a squat. And then we did a calf raise. So there, we combined so all four. So go very slow when you do this. It's not a race to the finish. It's not a race. 
It's not a race so because side. you really want to create that stretch. Forward. Good on. Alternated legs. It doesn't matter how you do I it. I think we home. should. Squat. And calf raise. Mm -mm. Okay, so side lunge. Forward lunge. Squat. And calf raise. So what's that? Three sets of four is 12. We're almost done. So side. So are you doing the, okay, you're going to go the opposite, which is opposite good. Leg. I think going opposite is really a good idea. Well, yeah, switch legs, each exercise. That way you aren't just focusing on one. Squat. And a calf raise. So other side. Side lunge. Forward lunge. Squat and calf raise. You know, it's almost easier to come out of the squat into a calf raise. Yeah. It's like an automatic. It's a, it's a natural motion as yeah. you're coming up to go into it. Good, one more set. And that will get us to our 400. Oops, I forgot the side. Well, that's all right, let's change it up. <laughs> I like these forward lunges. Let's do those for a minute. We only need about four more to reach our goal. So you do four of whatever you want to do. If four you do more. Four, <laughs> four calf raises, oh. do that. Oh, you want yeah. to do four squats, whatever you want to do to reach your 400 pound goal. There you go, Lori just did it. So if you if you did this at home, that was 100 repetitions, which gave you 400 pounds for the day. Congratulations. You did it. And then we wanna walk for just one minute. Just get a little bit more of our endurance, keep our heart rate up for a second longer, and then we're gonna do our Bible study. The most important thing, get fit, but keep spiritually fit. Absolutely. Exercise your spirit. And while we're doing our Bible study, you can stretch. So True. just redo the stretches we did at the beginning of the show while we're doing our Bible study. That'll help you stretch out after working your legs. I mean, we did 100 repetitions. That's a lot. That's a good little workout. I'm sweating and I was only using yes. nine pound <laughs> dumbbells, so. <laughs> Same here. Ready? I'm ready. So grab your Bible at home or just grab your cell phone. And if you've been following along with our reading plan or our listening plan during the Walk Fit Challenge, it's 13 weeks or to get through, I'm sorry, 12 weeks to get through the New Testament. And we are almost done. We're in one of the last couple weeks of the challenge. So we are actually going to be in 1 John, the book of 1 John today. So get your cell phone, get your Bible out. And we're gonna be in 1 John, the first chapter, verses one through four. And we're gonna read out of the Passion Translation. Study whatever translation you like. If you like New Living, great. New American Standard, New King James, King James, if you want the Old English, whatever translation you want to study and read out of that, but we love this Passion Translation, so we're going to read out of that today. So 1 John 1, 1 through 4. We saw him with our very own eyes. We glazed, grazed, gazed upon him and heard him speak. Our hands actually touched him, the one who was from the beginning, the living expression of God. This life giver was made visible and we have seen him. We testify to this truth, the eternal life giver lived face to face with the Father and has now dawned upon us. So we proclaim to what, what we have seen and heard about this life giver so that we may share and enjoy this life together. For truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his son Jesus, the anointed one. We're writing these things to you because we want you to release we want to release to you our fullness of joy. Wow, there's so much in that. <laughs> it's a love letter, but a joy letter. So just fantastic. Beautiful. I love that it says the life giver. Yes. What I think is really awesome is when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are seeing him. You're seeing him through what he shows you by the change you receive in your heart, which I think is beautiful. And you know, they, he's saying we gazed upon him and heard him speak. Well, you hear Jesus speak every time you read the Bible. You're hearing God speak to you as you read the Word of God, which I think is just absolutely stunning if you think about who it is 
But the other part of this, this life giver was made visible and we've seen him, we testify to this truth. God becomes real to you. It's about the relationship you have with him. He becomes so real to you that the life of God living in you starts speaking to you through the Holy Spirit that lives in you through the Word of God. And that just, if you think about this, this is about the relationship. They're talking about a relationship that they had with Jesus Christ, first off experience with Him. We have the same opportunity. It's experiencing who Jesus is living in us and He gives life to our mortal body. He gives life to our mind because we now have the mind of Christ. So all of that changes, that's the life giver. I love this. So he's saying, we saw him, we touched him, yeah. we, we heard him. So then what does Jesus do? He says, look, I can't stay with you guys any longer. I've got to go, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send the comforter. So we can put our name in here. It doesn't have to be, oh, well, I wasn't able to walk with Jesus. Yes, you can through the Holy Spirit. So you could say, Lori and Robert have seen him with our own eyes. We've gazed upon him, we've turned him, we've spoken with him, we've touched him because we now have the Holy Spirit in us. So we can experience, and that's why we picked this scripture today, we can experience the same thing that John is talking about in this gospel. And then that last verse, we are writing these things to you because we want to release to you our fullness of joy. Number one, that's why we do this program. That's, that's exactly right. We just want to spread joy. We want to encourage you to, to, you know, be as healthy as you can, but be spiritually healthy. We want you spiritually strong. This whole Walk Fit Challenge really should be a Walk With Christ Challenge. That's the walk exactly fit, it. The exercise portion, great. Get healthier, do those things, make it a habit in your life, but it should be a Walk With Christ Challenge. We would rather you spend, you know, yes, 30 minutes a day walking and then an hour or two hours in the Word developing your relationship with Christ. And as Lori said, when you read the Bible, you've heard from God. You hear yes. Jesus. You read the red letters. People say, well, I don't, I don't hear the voice of God. Yes, read the do. red letters. That's Jesus actually speaking to you. So yes, you do hear the voice of God. And then you'll become more sensitive to it. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit in you. And then listen to what God puts in your heart. He speaks to your heart, not to your head. He will speak to your heart. He will tell you what you need to know. And it's really more than anything what you need to know is God wants a relationship with you. He wants you to go to Him for all things. He's your Heavenly Father. You have a spiritual Father, a Heavenly Father that wants to hear from you and you have a relationship with Him. And that's what this is all about, having a deeper relationship with God. So, so beautiful. I mean, our Heavenly Father, how much does, how much more does an earthly father want to supply for their children? Right. But we're talking about a Heavenly Father that grafted us into the family, adopted us. We've been adopted. I mean, that is so powerful to that know that beautiful. you've been adopted. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. God bless. Have a great week.